I'm Steve for This Up With Cars and today I'm trading in my Royal Enfield for an electric motorcycle. Well that's not completely true. Both of these bikes really are mine. I've had the Royal Enfield for a long time. I just got the Zero this week. So I'm not actually getting rid of the Royal Enfield, but I probably won't be riding it much now that I have the Zero. As you would imagine as a Royal Enfield owner, and this is my fourth Royal Enfield motorcycle, I am a glutton for punishment. I'm used to shoddy build quality and having a lot of electrical issues. So you can say I've been preparing for electric motorcycle ownership for years. I am however very impressed by the build quality of the Zero and I have had absolutely no problems with it so far. Not only is it fast but if I turn the settings on the Zero down all the way it is still faster than my Royal Enfield. Let's take a tour around my all-black 2022 Zero SR. At first glance, the Zero doesn't look a whole lot different than a regular motorcycle. In fact, most people haven't even noticed unless they see it moving. When it's moving, it hardly makes any sound except for a little whine. At low speeds, usually the only noise that you hear is the pads and the caliper slightly rubbing on the rotors. If you look at where the battery and the motor sit, it's real low. It's almost in line with the axles of the wheels. So the center of the gravity of this bike is very low. On the right side of the bike, everything is pretty much normal. You still have your brake up here, still have a brake down here, and this bike has pegs for a passenger as well. On the left side of the bike though, there is no clutch lever and there is no pedal for changing gears. On this side, you can see two locks. This opens up the luggage compartment, and there's another one down here, and that takes off the passenger seat, and then there's two helmet clips hidden down in there. There are various charging options available for these bikes. Mine has a charge port built in right here, so I can pull up to any normal electric car charger, and I can charge this bike off of it. And in front of that is one of my favorite parts about this motorcycle. If you put the key in the side lock over here, this is a little luggage compartment. And inside there's a couple USB ports. You can throw your phone in there. It'll charge when the bike is on. Those USBs are not live when the, when the bike is off. Up here is the O2B2 port, so you can plug a scan tool into it. All the error codes are also available on the dashboard. I like to throw a light jacket in there when I'm riding when it's really hot in case it cools down. Or I can go to lunch, throw my lunch in there, throw a drink in there. Makes it really nice not to have to mount saddlebags to it or carry a backpack around all the time. When we turn the bike on, it takes a second for it to boot up. This bike does have a 12 volt battery in it. And when you turn the bike on, it uses a 12 volt battery to run all of this. And then you'll actually hear a big solenoid click and that turns on the main drive batteries. The indicators on the screen right now mean that I have the kill switch on and I also have the kickstand down. Now while either of those are turned off like this, if you hit the mode button, you can bring up a preference screen. And all of the things here you can also change on your phone. You can change the brightness and contrast to the screen. You can change what gauges you're seeing, add and remove the time. You can pair it to your phone. There is a cellular uh, connection built into the bike and it is turned on all the time. You don't have to pay for any service for it. And it does things like send you notifications to your phone that the bike is connected or other things that it wants to communicate to you even if you don't have it stored at home. You can change the time and date, change what kind of units we're using, the language, we can turn on automatic firmware updates on or off here as well. Underneath battery, right now my battery is charged to 53% and it's estimating with the riding style that I've been using that I have 41 miles left. And if we select charge target, with the settings that I have selected here, that means that it is only going to charge the bike up to 75%. This is to pr prolong the life of the battery. You don't want to be charging your battery fully all the time if you don't have to. And then under performance, we can turn our ABS on and off. We can also, you can see traction control up here. 
When the bike is turned on, we can also change the amount of traction control that we're getting. And then under data, we have our trip meters and we can also read the error codes. So if there was an error code on the screen, we can come into here and we can see what that error is about. Right now I have zero errors. And if I did have an error, if I use the, the Bluetooth app on my phone to connect to the motorcycle, I can clear errors just like you would with a regular scan tool. You'll see at the top of the screen, it has parking mode and extended rain charging. Those are both grayed out because those are features that are coming later. Those are not engaged right now, but those will be coming in a further firmware update. And there are several items that you can unlock later with your phone. I, th I believe there are seven items with this bike that I have here that I will be able to unlock later. Parking mode lets you actually use the electric motor to make the motorcycle go backwards for parking. You will easily be able to switch between forward and backwards mode. And extended rain charging will give you 20% more range. It will let you decharge the battery 10% more than normal, and it will also let you charge the battery 10% more than normal giving you a total of 20% extra range, which depending on how you drive it, is usually about 150 miles. Now with the bike picked up, if I take off the kickstand and I turn the kill switch to the on position, you can see that the screen has now changed. And what the mode button does has changed as well. If we just hit it, nothing's going to happen. If we hold it down, you can see that zero flashing on the screen. That's a custom driving mode that I have set up. We can switch to rain, eco, standard, sport, and zero. Zero is that custom mode that I've created. All of the rest of those that you saw, those are standard built-in modes and you cannot change any of the characteristics of these built-in modes. Each of the quadrants around the speedometer, you can change what is displayed in these four areas. So far, the bike has covered 178 miles. I think it had about 20 miles on it when I bought it. So I've put 150 of those on it in a couple days. This little icon right here, that is for the heated handlebar grips. You can turn those on and off. And this bike also has cruise control. And to engage that, you hold down the cruise control for a few seconds. Now the green light is on. Then you tap it again to set it at the speed you're going. Okay, let's take it for a ride. We'll turn it on. This sure beats uh, worrying about a uh, bad battery. Around here, the batteries go bad very quickly because we do store these for the winter. It's really nice that I don't have to worry about it. Also, I don't have to worry about kickstarting the bike like I do on the Royal Enfield. Just turn it on and we're ready to go. <laughs> I am starting us out in eco mode today. And in this mode, when you let off the throttle, it has a, a large amount of neutral braking, which means that it slows down without you having to hit the brakes. And of course, if you were to hit the brakes and trigger the brake pedal, then it'll add even more uh, regenerative braking into the system. Even in eco mode, this bike is pretty fast. Get immediate acceleration all the time. You don't have to worry about switching gears. Just give it throttle and it wants to go. The mode that I have created doesn't use a lot of power. In fact, the zero custom mode that I created has 0% power and 0% torque. And that is still faster than my Royal Enfield. And as for driving around town, makes the, the, the bike really enjoyable. And I have the neutral braking. You can see we're stopping pretty quickly there. I have that mostly turned off so that it coasts a lot more like a regular bike. I, uh, I'll show you more about the way that I have my custom mode created later. And uh, for me, it, it, right now, driving around in town, it's the most enjoyable mode to be in. So if we want to change modes, we hold down the mode button. You can see Eco is flashing now. We can go into standard and to switch, we have to let off the throttle first and then we can hit our mode button and it will confirm the selection. Now we're in standard mode. This has a lot less neutral braking. If I let off, it coasts a lot more like a normal motorcycle. Also accelerates a lot faster.
when you are not in the eco mode, so you have to watch yourself because since the bike is not making a lot of sounds, you can really rack up a huge amount of speed real quickly without you even noticing. Then you'll look down and you're going well over the speed limit. As far as where the noise is that you hear at low speed, like I said, in a parking lot, you can actually hear the brake pads on the rotors. You hear a lot of tire noise. You hear a little bit of whine from the motors. And then you also hear your drive belt. Right now I'm on a pretty bumpy road. You can see the bike is shaking. This bike is as smooth as the road that you're on. So if you're on a really smooth piece of section of road, let's try to come over here. It is just really smooth. On the Royal Enfield, your handlebars are just shaking. It's just shaking your hands apart. Your watch keeps pounding into your wrist. And uh, you really get sore after spending some time on the Royal Enfield and on, on other bikes, especially single cylinder bikes like that Enfield is. We have a pretty fun section of road right here. Let's switch to sport mode. Hold it down, click it again. Now we are in sport mode. The bike is really fast, but the throttle response is just so smooth. And the throttle response changes based on what mode you're in. So if I switch to my zero mode, you know, it's not going to let me select it right now because I am on the throttle. You wouldn't want your uh, throttle to change how much power it's applying while you're actually on it. So if I let go, now I can change into my zero mode. We're actually at 0% power and 0% torque right now. I'm going to slow down a little bit. There's no one around. And this is 0% power and 0% torque. It is still a pretty fast motorcycle, even with everything turned down. Like I said, the settings that I have it on right now, I do have full regen turned on so that when I am hitting my brakes, I was on my foot brake there, it is slowing me down pretty good. But it will coast because it doesn't have a whole lot of neutral braking on it right now. It's really nice sitting here at a stoplight. You don't have to hold the clutch in. Don't have to worry about shifting gears. When the light changes, just go. I have chosen to have RPM displayed down here. I don't remember what was in this quadrant. Uh, really, I don't find that a lot of these things are useful. Range is obviously most important. as w Being able to see your percentage of charge is important as well because they tell you you shouldn't discharge it more than 30%. So far I haven't had a lot of problems with people not knowing that I was there or anyone walking out in front of me because the bike isn't making a whole lot of noise. I have had rabbits and things like that run across in front of me. I don't know if they didn't see me or didn't hear me. So animals might be more of a problem on an electric bike than it is on a IC engine bike. Driving through neighborhoods like this, you're not even making a sound. None of these people even know that I'm here. Unless they see me, they aren't going to know that I'm coming through. So you can start up your bike, ride around. You're not making enemies of all your neighbors. 
And if you're using your bike to commute, it makes a lot of sense because you can charge it up when you get home. You don't ever have to stop at a fuel station. This bike really feels like a cross between a scooter and a Honda Grom. With all that weight on the bottom, with what feels like a CVT transmission, it uh, gives you just a great sensation of agility and responsiveness. Wanted to show real quick the app. So I have my iPhone connected right here. When I have the key on, it will connect to the bike here in a second. Okay, now it's connected. Shows that my battery is at 33%. Shows that I have my custom ride mode selected. Let's go under battery. Here we can see also it's at 33%. We can move this little lightning bolt here on the side and that will change the percentage that is charged or we can come in here. We can change the charging window so that we are using the charging during peak times of the night to make it even cheaper to charge this bike up. Under performance is where we change our ride modes. So if I go to manage ride mode, you can see Eco 2 and Eco 3, which I have put in here. When I got the bike, there was also a Canyon mode, which had appeared here, but for some reason it seems to have disappeared. And if I click on these modes, it will explain a lot more of what we were seeing when we were riding the bike. In Eco mode, we have a top speed set of 75 miles an hour. It is using 0% of the power which means basically it's less than 1%. Max torque was at 22%, 100% neutral regen, and 100% brake regen. That's why it was stopping so quickly. We can also change the traction control for the different modes. And you can even change what color it's going to display on the display when you select that mode. For standard mode, we get 108 miles an hour. Power is set to 53%. Max torque is set to 44%, neutral regen 43%, and brake regen 50%. For sport mode, again, 108 miles an hour, power is at 100%, max torque is at 100%, neutral regen at 46%, and brake regen at 35%. Now I can't modify any of these on the built-in modes, but I could duplicate this mode and then change any of these figures that I want. Let's take a look at the zero mode that I created. This is the one that I use most of the time. Max speed set to 75 miles per hour. My power is at 0%. Max torque is at 0%. Neutral regen, 50%. And brake regen at a 100%. This seems to be a really nice setting for me. It really makes it feel like a lot of my IC engine bikes. And if we wanted to modify any of these, just move the slider, we could take the max speed up to 120 miles per hour. And this is changeable. Coming with the upgrades that I mentioned earlier, there is a dealer upgrade that's going to come which will let you get more top speed, more power, and more torque out of the bike. But that one is the only option for the upgrade later that you have to take it to the dealer for. So the neat thing is you can come in here, create your different modes, and you can make this bike really any bike that you want it to be. If you want it to be your eco commuting bike, if you want it to be your sport bike, if you are planning on taking it to a track, you can match your modes to how you're going to use it. And the bike doesn't have to fit into one riding style, which the manufacturer had decided this is what this bike's going to be. And if we go into data, we can log our rides. You can see I now have 201 miles on it. When they come out with the unlocks, which is faster charging, faster speed, uh, on-screen navigation, the parking mode, and the 20% more range, um, I'm really excited to play with those and show those to you. But I think this gives you a real good introduction into what this bike is. And everyone that I've let ride this bike so far, I think they all want to run out and get one, maybe not necessarily this exact model because Zero does offer many different models of bikes. But I think everyone has so far been extremely impressed at what this electric motorcycle does.
So that's going to be it for today. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.